Hello everybody and welcome back to Ozymandias Conquest of the Outer Planets and here we are on the launch pad. Yes, the Ozymandias is heading into the skies, into the cloudy skies as you have may noticed because I finally managed to get environmental visual enhancements, what a really complicated name for a mod. I uh, got this to work and now I have clouds and I also have cloud configurations for the outer planets system. So this is going to be interesting on a visual level as well. At least I hope so. So we are witnessing the launch of the Ozymandias. Captain Stelnitzer Kerman and yeah, what a beautiful stage separation. That was nice. So, as I said before, Captain Stelitzer Kerman is heading up into lower Kerbin orbit with her crew of, including herself, nine Kerbals. We have three pilots, three engineers and three scientists. And we hope to, of course, bring all of them back once the mission is finished. But first we have to leave our home, our home planet. And first and foremost, the atmosphere. So here we are already above the cloud layers. I know there are some configurations where you have multiple cloud layers, but they kind of messed up my installation. Even with the current uh, setup of the mod, I still had a lot of crashes and yeah. So I'm just happy that it works somehow and I've got some clouds which are really, in my opinion, essential for a space experience. And we have separated, yeah. So this is the vehicle that will head out to Sarnus. I have decided that uh, the final stage, the Ozymandias 8 itself, will remain attached to this booster stage until we have left Kerbin's sphere of influence, because we can refuel this thing here in orbit and then we can spare about 2000 meters per second of delta V which is actually something that I would really like to save instead of just burning away to get away from Kerbin. But first we have to get into orbit. And our seven Rhino engines are burning really, really well. We are now coasting to Apoaps. And then of course we will circularize this beast. And then we have to wait for the refueler. Yeah, so this mission is basically, well, this part of the mission, the entire mission is getting to the outer planets and getting back. So this part that you are seeing in this episode is the launch of the spacecraft and the refueling of the spacecraft before we will head out in the next episode to the wondrous and mysterious planet of Sarnus and its rings. No Kerbal has ever seen it before. Close up, there are only mysteries and stories surrounding it and its dark powers. Some telescopes have glimpsed what appear to be rings around the planet, which have never be appeared before on any other planet in the known planetary system. But before we can get there and before we can, of course, bar any suspicion and any hocus pocus, we will be scientifically aware and we will gather some science. That's what Kerbals do. We don't believe in superstition, we believe in science. Even though it's just a nice statistic to brag about. So finally, we are at our burn point, at our maneuver node, and we are circularizing the Ozymandias vehicle. 
camera wobble indicating that we are in a safe orbit or closing in on a safe orbit just some final touches and yes this looks actually very good so yeah we are in a safe orbit around Kerbin all nine crew members are happy and now it's time to get some more fuel But unfortunately, there have been some engineering difficulties, as you will notice in just a few seconds. This is the refueling vehicle that will take up some fuel to the Ozymandias itself. And yeah, no idea why that happened. And also no idea why this thing exploded, even though... The menu says it was overheating. Yeah, that appears to be a nasty little bug and I really hope that this will be fixed in Kerbal Space Program 1.1. But after reverting to the VAB and replacing something and doing it all again, I was finally able to get this thing off of the launch pad. So we have some nice aerodynamic effects here. But that doesn't matter, we have a fairing around our payload and we're heading straight up to the skies. So I'm skipping a little bit ahead in here um, because you have already seen a lot of launches and you know how that looks like. So everything looks okay. Boom! This is the refueling vehicle itself, which is basically just three big Kerberdyne tanks with an engine. And we have separated from the booster stage and are heading to our rendezvous point with the Ozymandias rocket. You can see the three big monopropellant tanks and I really hope I don't crash into it. Nah, it's okay. It's okay. We're safe. But I believe if you would perform such a maneuver in real life, somebody in Houston would get a heart attack. At least a heart attack. Or maybe a stroke. Or both. Which are coincidentally almost the same thing. Because in both cases, if you may not have known this already, in both cases some blood clots block some small arteries and parts of your body die. So that's basically what happens when you get a heart attack. Part of the heart muscle dies. And the same happens if you get a stroke. Part of your brain does not get any blood anymore because it is clogged up and it dies. So yeah, that's why some people after having a stroke can no longer walk or talk or do other things. But enough of that. We are here to refuel this and not talk about my past as a paramedic. So here we go. This is once again Navy Fierce Docking Porch Alignment Indicator Mod, which I really, 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 really re can recommend. I cannot recommend it enough because this makes docking so so much easier. It's like I don't know. It's it's like uh, having a race car driver driving you to work every day or something like that. I don't know. It's really makes docking a lot less painful and a lot more enjoyable. And I've already skipped ahead a little bit so you can uh see the docking maneuver itself and don't have to endure the slow approach because I did not bring a lot of thrusters on this one. You can see the monoprop firing and it's barely able to move this big refueling rig around. Those of you who remember my Operation Moonsucker refueling base uh, and may have been disappointed that I do not bring fuel from there. 
There is a simple reason for that. I built the Moonsucker base in my sandbox game and I'm doing this mission here in my science tree game. So this is the same save game that I have used for my Journey to Jewel mission. Well, if you remember the Jewelishka heading to all five moons of Jewel and heading back to Kerbin and gathering, I think, 20,000 something science. Yeah, so in order to get some sort of comparison or at least some value of science that I am going to bring back from the other planets, I have decided to reactivate that game and use the science save game for this mission. So there is no uh, moon soccer base in this uh, universe, so to speak, because you could call every safe game in Kerbal Space Program a separate universe. So I'm making sure here that every single battery is turned off so that we can save electricity. Reason being the big solar panels on the Ozymandias itself are hidden at the moment because they are below parts of the booster stage. Yeah, maybe not the brightest idea, but that's how it is. So I have plotted with the transfer window mod, I have plotted a trajectory to Sarnus, I have put that into Kerbal alarm clock and I'm now going to deorbit my refueler so it does not take up any space in orbit and no other vehicle will hit it. Doing my retrograde burn. And maybe I have enough fuel left to make this land in the ocean. Let's see if that is possible. So heading down to the surface. Heating up, but I don't really care. No heat shield was harmed during the filming of this episode. And no Kerbal either, of course. What do you think of me, a monster? This is a purely automatic drone ship and we are almost down to the surface of Kerbin's oceans and that did not work. So I tried again and that did not work either. So I tried again. And yeah, it appears that my Delta V is not enough to sustain a stable deceleration burn. So I tried some kind of suicide burn attempts, but... But all of those were unsuccessful. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.